Hi everyone, welcome to another webisode of The Good Doctor on EasyLiving.com. Today I'm here at the Allied Diagnostic Center and with me is Dr. Aneta Dunlop. And we're going to be talking about inflammatory bowel disease. Welcome to the program. Welcome. So the first question is, for all of our viewers who don't know what this disease is, can you elaborate a little bit? Inflammatory bowel disease affects alimentary tract. So we need to know a little bit about the anatomy, otherwise we won't be able to understand the disease if sure. we don't know the, the normal things. Uh, alimentary tract starts with the mouth, then of course it's the oral cavity in where the food gets chewed up and then travels to the esophagus via throat, which is esophagus like a long tube that gets us to the stomach, which is a storage tank in which food gets broken down. And from stomach, the food moves into the intestine. In inflammatory bowel disease, Various parts of this alimentary tract can be involved, but depending on the type of inflammatory bowel disease, there are uh, certain parts that are more commonly involved. So when we're talking about diseases, are there various types? Yes, there are two main types of inflammatory bowel disease. And the first type is, co uh, is called Crohn's colitis. Um, uh, and the second type is called ulcerative colitis. And Crohn's colitis, pretty much any part of alimentary tract can be involved, starting from the mouth and finishing at the bottom, right. basically. The most common affected area is termina allium, which is the last part of the small bowel, hence sometimes the name um, termina alitis. We happen to see in the diagnosis we get, oh my god, termina alitis, what is this? This is the inflammation of the last part of the small bowel. The second type of inflammatory bowel disease is uh, ulcerative colitis and that usually starts in the large bowel. Usually in the rectum, sometimes in the last part of the colon, which is called sigmoid colon. And from there it can spread up or stay put in the, in the distant part of the, of the large bowel. So from a patient's point of view, are there discomforts that they will feel that would sort of be signals as to this disease? Well, major symptom in any type of inflammatory bowel disease is abdominal pain and cramps, discomfort. And uh, uh, another quite common symptom is diarrhea. Right. So unexplained diarrhea, abdominal pain, cramps, rings a bell, you need to see the doctor. Right. These symptoms can be very non-specific and other diseases can have them as well, mainly uh, in irritable bowel syndrome. So it can be quite confusing unless you get a diagnosis using proper tests, you may not know which, which type of, of bowel problem you have. Right. And it's very important to get the diagnosis early because of course it affects the outcomes and uh, there can be uh, even life-threatening complications in the inflammatory bowel disease which don't occur in irritable bowel disease. So you really have to get things right. So how does someone get diagnosed for this disease? Well, it usually starts with a couple of laboratory tests. Uh, your, blood, uh, your, your doctor will usually take a blood sample and a stool sample. Blood is to show something which happens non-specifically, like anemia and raised white cell count, which is inflammatory cells in our body that fight infection and inflammatory causes. And also you get your stool anal analyzed um, to check for any infection. Once you've got your laboratory checkup, then you will usually be referred to the x-ray department for analysis of the bowel. Mm -hmm. If your symptoms are acute and your abdominal, you have a lot of abdominal pain, your abdomen is grossly distended, and of course you're going to have so-called speedy way through the x-ray department, starting with a set of x-rays to make sure your bowel hasn't burst, and followed by CT to ensure, again, your bowel hasn't burst, your bowel is viable, whether you have any signs of bowel obstruction, which we talked earlier, mm -hmm. whether the food can pass freely through the bowels right. or not, whether you have any abscess. If, if your symptoms are not so acute and you're more chronic, so ongoing every day, you will normally come to the x-ray department as an outpatient for a specific test. If you are suspected to have ulcerative colitis, you will have your large bowel analyzed. If you are suspected to have Crohn's colitis, we would normally start with small bowel analysis. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for this insightful information. Thank you very for much. all of our viewers, if you've got any thoughts, comments, or questions about this subject matter, please leave them in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching The Good Doctor on easyliving.com where you can find anything and everything lifestyle.